Assalamu alaikum family. This is Mariam Alima and welcome back to another episode of What Do You Know About Islam? So it has again been a very long time since I've uh, been with the family, but that's neither here nor there. By Allah's grace, we are back to finish the reading of How to Eat to Live, book one. And inshallah, if permitted, we will read book two as well because this is pertinent information that is needed. It is from God in person, the Master of Muhammad. So it's for our best. Um, I want to start off by greeting you all in the greeting words of peace again, in the words of Assalamu alaikum in our original tongue, which means peace be unto you. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who appeared to us in the person of Master W. Frat Muhammad, to whom praises forever due. I further bear witness that he rose the exalted Christ, the Mahdi, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and with their two minds, they are guiding the Messiah in our midst, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. And it is in their three great names that I greet you again in the greeting words of peace of Assalamu alaikum. Um, very thankful to be back with you all. I really, really am. We're first things first. We're going to address a question from a viewer. And I thank Sister Linda Copeland for her questions. If there are ever any questions, I, I please, if you're listening on, um, say, Google or Spotify or Anchor app, go to my YouTube page. Um, it's just Mariam Alima. I think it's my whole name, actually. Mariam Alima Warif. And just go to the corresponding, you really can do it on any Mariam Alima, what do you know about Islam video and just ask the question because it'll pop up, you know, it'll be the newest question and I will be happy to answer it. So I want to go ahead and address Sister Linda Copeland Yonis question. Can you speak on if we, on if when you buy milk, you only buy the milk that shows the hole on the carton. I remember my old How to Eat to Live had it, but had it in there, but in my newest one, I don't see it. So, Sister Linda, I believe that you're speaking on about what uh, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad touches on on page 50. Um, it doesn't say anything about the carton saying whole milk, but I will read what he has about whole milk. Page 50. Whole milk that is clear of TB, which is tuberculosis, germs, is best for us to drink. But if we cannot get whole milk, we can drink the milk that the dairies have but we should boil it at a certain temperature in order to kill that problem germ drink plenty of milk and eat butter instead of so much of this artificial butter made of vegetable fat and you will have better health I mean, vegetable fat and soy some soybeans which we know is not for human consumption so to that um if you are able to be in the vicinity of getting your milk from a local dairy farmer that you know does not use any type of harm, harmful um, medicines or are injecting their cows or goats or anything with anything that will be harmful to you and them, then you can trust, you can trust that milk to be um, free of impurities and you can drink that milk as is. Now, if you have to get milk from the grocery store then that would be milk that you would boil. And right now in this time of pestilence, it has been said that they are injecting animals with the uh, COVID vaccine. So it is imperative that you, if you are buying whole, if you're buying milk in general, that is not from a dairy that you know of, that you should boil that milk in order to strive to kill anything that has been put into the animal that is that will be left in the milk. Now, um, there is a milk that is on the market that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has um, given a thumbs up, so to speak, um, Kelowna milk. I find it in my local Sprouts uh, supermarket and it is an Amish milk. And it is uh, it has the cream on top, it's non-homogenized, non-pasteurized. And so I enjoy that milk. I don't drink milk, but I use milk a lot in things that I cook and bake. So I do need milk. I actually have two of those in the freezer as we speak. So again, that's Kelowna milk, K-A-L-O-N-A. 
it's um, a orange, a orange um, type of, um, I don't want to say packaging because it's not a packaging, but an orange uh, seal on it. I can't think of the word. Wrap. It's wrapped in orange and it says Kelowna. So anyway, yes, to pay back up on our reading, we're starting with page 51. Food can be life or death. We can shorten and destroy our lives by the way we prepare and cook the food we eat. Allah, the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praises are due forever, taught me that all of our food, not including fruits, should be cooked and cooked until thoroughly done. It should be seasoned with salt where necessary. The food we eat should not be poisonous food, such as the flesh of swine and of wild animals, birds, and beasts. We should not eat fish that weighs more than 50 pounds. Water scavengers in the form of the fish family and other water animals of that kind. As we know, there is much animal life taken as food from water today that we should not eat. The believers of Islam should be aware and not eat such foods. In cooking your food, be sure that you cook it thoroughly, but not to the point where it loses its taste. Safeguard your delicate stomach that has to digest all that you eat by not overburdening it with trying to digest half-cooked food or raw food and the acid gases from such foods. This is what hastens the doctor to your bedside. And after that, the undertaker. And after that, the grave digger. Remember, we kill ourselves by what we eat and how we eat it. Just as food is our source of life, it is also our source of death. As God has taught me, Food keeps us here and food takes us away. For long life, take long intervals between your meals and do not eat over one meal a day. How to live more than 100 years. Allah God has taught me in the person of Master Farad Muhammad how to eat to live so that I also may teach you. He desires to extend our lives from a short span averaging 62 years to a span of 1,000 years, or for as long as we desire to live. He said there is no set time for us to die. We will, we kill ourselves daily by means of what we think, what we eat, and what we drink. Think about it, and you will agree that we kill ourselves. As I said in an earlier chapter, How to Eat to Live, there is no way of prolonging life except by being careful watching and examining what we put into our bodies to sustain, to sustain life and the regularity of our eating and drinking habits. We have been taught what to eat and what to drink by a people, the white race, who has never obeyed the law or religion of Allah God. These rules Allah God gave Moses, gave Moses' people in the Ten Commandments for their good, clear as a mirror, law and guidance, which they should not forget. However, they kept none of this. Everything that Allah said, thou shalt not do, they have ignored and said, thou shalt do. Therefore, the Christian race is no example or guide for one who seeks to obey the law of Allah God, for God now threatens to remove them from the planet Earth. If they would stop deceiving the people, making them believe they are what they are not, and trying to change the natural religion of Allah God into the unnatural, which is false, their doom probably could be delayed. There is a sect among them whose members call themselves Orthodox, Jew Orthodox Jews, a few who still try to follow the Ten Commandments given to them through Moses. These are wiser, more skillful than the Christians. How to eat to live? Allah God said to me, in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever, that we who believe in him as our God and Savior should eat but one meal a day, once every 24 hours. Eat nothing between meals, not even candy, fruit, or anything which would start the stomach digestive processes. In this way, our eating of the proper foods and drinks at the proper time would extend our life to 140 years. This would protect us from sickness. He said, if we would start our infants eating one meal a day, as soon as they are able to partake of solid foods, 
It will enable them to live to an age of 240 years. I then asked him, how about eating once every 48 hours? He said to me, you would be ill only one day out of four or five years. I asked him, what was the cure for that one day of illness? He said, fast three days and you will be all right. I asked him, what about eating one meal every three days? He said, you will never be sick if you eat once every 72 hours. This is about two meals every six days, which would extend our lifespan to 1,000 years, for there is no poison from the previous meal three days ago, which has enough power to do you any harm. The fast destroys the accumulation of poison food, of food poison. The body is made up of water, chemicals, stone, metals, vegetation, and air. All that is in the earth is in some form in our bodies and you have no birth record of the earth. Although there is a record, you probably do not have it. It is a very old earth. It is not as you have been made to believe only 6,000 years old. It is more than 6 trillion years old and it will be here for a long, long time yet. What comes out of it such as life cannot live as long as the earth itself, but it can be made to live a very long time if carefully nursed according to its nature. As you see and as you see and scientists teach you, the long life of the California redwood tree, Sequoia Sempervirens, Sempervir, it's Latin or yeah, Sempervirens, Sempervir. The California redwood tree, the sequoia. There is mention in the Bible of Allah God, a saying that his people's life will be as the tree. There is an oak in Arabia under which they claim Abraham met God that is still alive today. Allah God never intended the righteous, the righteous lives should be cut short of 100 years on this earth. I have experience in living and eating according to the way he taught me for a while and I found it one of the happiest and most peaceful ways of which I ever dreamed. I began with eating one meal a day and forced my family to do the same for several years until I was picked up and sent to prison for teaching Islam in 1942. Of course, the government said they sent me up, they sent me up for failing to register. That really was not the reason for I did not come under the draft law at that time. Some of my followers, 60, 65 years old, were sent to prison at the same time. Persons of such an age were not desired by the War Department. While in prison, the Christians made it hard for us to live as we had been. They deliberately put swine or the essence of swine in everything and the assistant warden made mock of it when I told him my followers lived on nothing but bread to avoid swine. He said that even the bread had swine in it. We used to make a meal of dry baked white potatoes. We had it hard. And all of my followers now in prison still have it hard. All those converted to Islam in prison at present suffer in order to avoid eating the divinely prohibited flesh of the swine. And all that God said, thou shalt not do, they said, thou shalt do. You who read this book now, you who read this book know the Christians are the great false teachers of God who care nothing for Allah God's law. Since returning from prison, it has been hard for me to adjust my eating habits. For many days in prison, we had to eat two or three times a day in order to make up for the one meal a day through trying to avoid eating the divinely prohibited flesh of the swine. This caused me and the others illness after we had cleansed our stomachs of bad food and had begun to eat at the proper time. When we were eating the right food in the right way, we had no doctor bills and no medical bills. There were no medicines to be found in our medicine cabinets. However, as soon as we changed and began to eat between meals, 24 hours, we began to call on the doctor and his drugs and it brought about one complaint after another. I would never have suffered today from bronchial asthma if I had not disobeyed the law of the right foods to eat. Now I am on the way back 
to try to adjust my life according to the way Allah God taught me. I experienced eating once a day for several years and I experienced eating once every two days for a long time. Then I experienced eating one meal every three days, twice a week. I never had any symptoms of disease or sickness when I was eating once every 48 hours and once every three days. With this method, you feel as though you never were sick in all of your life, even if you are 100 years old. Nothing shortens our lives but our foolish shell. Foolish, <laughs> foolish selves. Proper food for body and mind equals good health. On the coming of God, according to the Bible and the Holy Quran, he began to create a people that must and will enjoy a long life and good health. They will not suffer sickness or grief and sorrow. They will live lives of complete happiness. The earth is full of food, but good health cannot enter our bodies until we have the proper food in the body and the proper food for thought. If we do not have the proper food for our way of thinking, we still cannot enjoy peace, good health, joy, and gladness of heart. We can eat the best food. We can take fast for nine days or for 20 or 30 days if we want to. And we will still suffer if we do not feed the brain with the right food. These two bodies, the brain and the digestive tract, have much in common with one another. Whatever hurts one hurts the other. We must treat both well. The Bible teaches you that God gave the dead more life. He comes to give you more life and, um, and an abundance of life. How can he do that for us unless we help ourselves to the assistance he is helping us to seek? We must help ourselves in this way to prolong our lives. Obey and do all that Allah bids us. Think the way he thinks, the thoughts of good. Seek to be like him, both physically and mentally. As the Holy Quran teaches us, when we have submitted ourselves entirely to the will of God, he then guides us into his path, his way of life. And then when we come to enjoy the paradise of life in the words, in these words of the Holy Quran, O soul that is at rest, enter into my gardens, into my paradise among servants well-pleased and well-pleasing. This is what man has sought, the heaven within and the heaven without. If heaven does not begin within, we will never enjoy it on the outside. We do not go to a certain place for heaven. Nearly all of my followers and I are already in heaven, a peace of mind and contentment for, and contentment for the necessities of life, such as food, clothing, shelter, and without the enemy of fear and grief. And with the protection of Almighty God, Allah, what more do we want? If we went into another place, we would still want we if we went into another place, we still would not enjoy it more. Oh certainly. We would be happy to live in a place where there was nothing but people like ourselves, thinking as we think, trying to obey the law of God. But still, within ourselves, we are happy because this evil world does not attract us anymore. We do not desire this kind of life that it's wicked that the wicked live. Our thoughts or minds feast upon the spirit of goodness. Therefore, the spirit of evil cannot find a place among us to dwell. Remember, life is what we make of it. Stay away from the hog, the swine, the stinking tobacco, weed, the hot, fiery alcohol, wine, beer, drugs, foolishness, ignorance, madness, drunkenness, gambling, murdering, robbery, deceitfulness, lying, mockery, and seeking to take advantage of your brother and your sister and believe in the presence of a, and believe in the presence of God in the person of Master Farad Muhammad to whom praises are due forever. I'll take a short little break right there. Oh my God, and I took a sh I took the break. Oh, it said at 1930, y'all. <laughs> That's so nice. All praises is due to Allah. We know that the coming of Master Fraud Muhammad made himself known July 4th, 1930. That ain't nothing but Allah. All praises is due to Allah. I wanted to touch on a few things. Basically, 
uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was Daniel. Yeah, when he went to prison, you know, and you know Daniel told him, "Nah, we good." We're, um, what what? Uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of the other three that were with uh, Daniel. It was um, Daniel, um, Abednego, Abednego, um, Meshach. And, um, mm, it was a third one. <laughs> it was someone else. But anyhow, Ain't of Dan was like, nah, we're good. <laughs> we can't eat that. We will be okay. And that's what you have to do. Um, you know, we are in a time of pestilence. And we all may not have the same finances as, you know, others or what may have you but beans some good old navy beans wheat bread buy your flour yeast or make sourdough wheat bread and some good wholesome milk i know it may be difficult for if you cannot buy because the milk is not inexpensive it is it does cost um then get the get the whole milk that you can afford and boil it just strive to do the best that you can do and one of the main things you can do is eat one meal a day to help allow the poisons within your body to be to pass through if you're eating three times a day and you're not able to eat the best food then you're just piling on like he says poison after poison after poison that is that's foolishness but we'll continue on with the reading i want to definitely read one more section for the family the benefits of eating once a day i mean he stresses it because that's the thing no matter what it is you have to eat once a day we are not made to eat every day look not every day but well not even every day you know because you're supposed to fast but you're not made to eat all day the benefits of eating once a day as many people are writing to me for personal answers as to what we should and should not eat i think it would lessen my work and be wise if you kept this book where you may per where you may refer to it when needed many of my followers write and tell me of the results that they are receiving from eating one meal a day or one meal every other day this will produce good results and lengthen our lives but children should not be forced to fast or to eat once a day or once every other day. Children and babies should eat at least twice a day. If you're now eating three meals a day and you would like to eat one meal every other day, you should not all of a sudden change from three meals a day every day to one meal every other day. First drop to two meals a day, then one meal a day and then when one meal every other day it is better to do it this way so that you will not make yourself sick and if you eat every other day do not begin your meal with heavy food i received many questions in regard to meat fish and poultry the main thing allah as well as the holy quran reminds us of is that when it comes to meat and fish allah forbids us to eat the flesh of swine or of the fish weighing 50 pounds or more. Although some people will not eat fish at all, there are many fish that we can eat, some weighing as little as a pound or a pound and a half. When eating fish, we should confine our fish eating to those fish weighing between one and 10 pounds. As I said previously, do not eat the scavengers of the sea, such as oysters, crabs, clams, snails, shrimp, eels, or catfish the catfish is a very filthy fish he loves filth and is the pig of the water some people write in complaining about the fish that swim on their sides but these fish can be eaten Allah has taught me that chickens are not good for us to eat they are quite filthy inasmuch as they do not eat the cleanest of food but we eat them we eat beef and lamb but Allah also said that they are not very good for us. It is not a sin for us to eat them. It is not a sin for us to eat 
Camp. Oh, Allah. Ooh. It is, it is not a sin for us to eat camels, but if we can find better food, we should not eat that above mentioned food. Many write and ask if they should eat meat at all. It is not a sin for you to eat meat, but it is a sin for you to eat the meat of the hog. If we want to prolong our lives, it is best that we do not eat meat or do not eat it so often. Beef is very coarse and many of our people do not eat it because of that. Horse meat can also be eaten. It is cleaner than the average meat, but we should not eat it unless we are extremely hungry and have nothing else to eat because it is a domestic animal and is gentle and close to the home. It is not even a sin to eat rabbit, but since the law said that the rabbit is so closely related to the house cat, we do not eat it. The rabbit, however, is cleaner than the house cat because he eats vegetables, roots and herbs and does not eat insects and other animals. Allah said that no wild game should be eaten at all. Regardless of how you love deer meat, the deer is not good to eat. No game that run wild in the woods or birds that fly with the exception of baby pigeons called squabs that have never flown away from their nests where they were born should be eaten. Please do not eat coons, possums, turtles, turtle eggs, or frog legs. None of these are good for us. Allah. A list of foods we must not eat. Do not eat the swine flesh. It is forbidden by the divine law of God. Do not eat filled peas, black-eyed peas, speckled peas, red peas, or brown peas. Do not eat lima beans or baby limas. Do not eat any bean but the small navy bean, the little brown pink ones and the white ones. Do not eat cornbread because it, because it is very hard on the stomach and not easily digested. Eat whole wheat bread, but not the whole grain. The whole grain is too hard to digest. Never eat freshly cooked bread. It rises and buckles in the stomach. Eating freshly cooked bread will shorten your life. Do not eat the rich soybean flour. Neither the flour nor the oil from the soybean is good for our stomachs. Do not eat the vegetable kale, nor sweet potatoes and white Irish potatoes, which are a staple food for people who live in frigid zones or for people who cannot afford other vegetables. The main thing you must do, I will repeat, is eat one meal a day or once every 24 hours and never or even touch or, and never eat or even touch the swine flesh. When you begin eating once a day, certainly you will begin to lose weight until you are used to eating once a day. Then you will start gaining weight again. But fat is not wanted for health. It is, it is an enemy to health. I think that we're going to com um, not commence. We've already saw it. I think that we're going to cease this reading today right here. And actually, no, we're going to go ahead and read this because this is still about nuts and whatnots. And then we're going to pick back up the next time on part five with babies. So this is our last section, page 64. You do not need numerous diets. Just eat once daily. <laughs> In the Christian world, you have innumerable food diets and numerous ways to prepare them, and these numbers are ever increasing. We must remember that the Christian world commercializes on everything, even on the gospel of Jesus Christ's spiritual food. God is visiting us to teach us, the lost and found members of God's family, to prolong our lives, give us more life and abundancy of life, as it is written. By no means can we get this life from any other source. We must follow the guidance of Almighty God who appeared in the person of Master Fraud Muhammad to whom praise is due forever and not the ways of the people whose diets have sent us calling the doctor and being hurried off to the hospital and from the hospital to our graves. The white people call the Christian race after they were driven out of the Holy Land and roamed the caves and hillsides of Europe 
lived there for 2,000 years eating raw food. They did not know how to cook anything or the use of fire until Moses taught them. Can we accept them and their way of life instead of Allah's? No, we will take Allah's will and his guidance. It goes something like this. Eat one meal a day. If this does not make you well, eat one meal every other day. Nothing between meals. And eat only the right foods. He said milk, bread, and navy beans would lengthen our lives to 140 years. He did not give us a long list of different food diets and foods to confuse us on what to eat. Cook your foods well done, especially animal meat. Boiling your food until it is well done is better on your digestive system than baking and frying meats. Baking and frying, it makes it about as hard on your digestive system as eating it raw. Never try to put a baked crust on any of your food except bread. Drink plenty of wholesome milk. Eat butter, bread, and fresh foods. If you eat fowl, lamb, squab, and fish, cook it well done. Keep your food under steam. Pressure cook it with the lid on. Do not look up a variety of things to eat. Most vegetables are good to eat, except those which you have been forbidden to eat, such as collard greens, black-eyed peas, and a lot of green cabbage sprouts. Eat the white part of the cabbage and the cauliflower. Stay off those peanuts, coconuts, and nuts, period. The Christian world eats according to taste. It eats not for life, but for taste. Cook well done whatever you eat. Cook bread thoroughly. If you have a refrigerator, put your leftover bread in it and place or place it where it will keep moist and won't dry out. If that does not taste good, cook it over again. There's no such thing as stale bread. Left, let no bakery or anyone fool you. It is for your health. If you do not have the knowledge of how to prepare your bread, seek a Muslim who knows how to prepare it. Some people Oh, some Muslim sister will teach you. I'll teach you. I'm actually, I'm sorry. I'm cutting into the reading, but I'm actually, inshallah, now I announce, since I'm announcing on this, I'm starting a cooking show. <laughs> so we're going to be making bread together. Okay, yes, he says, some Muslim sister will teach you. Give the cornbread back to the horses and the mules. That is their food. Do not eat grits or coarsely chopped corn. The corn is fit for you only in its milk stage. And that's the corn that um, is on the cob or off of the cob. And you're able to squeeze it, the kernel, and you can see the little white stuff come out. So not hard corn meal and all of that. But when it's in its milk stage, you can squeeze it. It's cooked. It's soft. It's been, it's grown. And it's... Delicioso. Eat to live and not to die. Food, God said to me, keeps us here and takes us away. Three meals a day are needed by a savage beast, but not by a human being. No human being should eat more than once a day. Eat when you are hungry. If it is not until six or seven days, let no one fool you about the above instructions. They will keep the doctor away from your bedroom and will prolong your life. Keep from eating those sweets that are prepared to hurry you off to your grave. And your diabetics eat only one meal a day. Stay away from that starchy food and sugar if you are a diabetic. And you won't have to get a doctor to pour insulin and other medicine into you to balance your life. All that I have said in this book, I have experienced myself. And that ends our reading for today. We have finished on page 66. We started from page 51. So 51 to 66. All right, family. Again, as he, you know, repetition, repetition, repetition. Eat one meal a day. Eat the best foods. Eat simple foods. Um, inshallah, I will be starting the cooking show very soon for inspiration for y'all. It's inspiration for myself. By Allah's grace, I have been eating one meal a day for at least a year by Allah's grace only and 
I, I truly don't get, I mean, I can be hungry, say at one o'clock, but one o'clock is only three hours away from four. One o'clock if I'm a little, you know, a little tingy, you know, I may go get some hot tea. Get a little bit, get a little bit of tea or may fix myself another cup of joe, cup of, cup of coffee. But just strive hard. Strive hard and you will be successful. Ask Allah to assist you. Seek assistance through patience and prayer and diligence and a can-do attitude. But I thank you all for tuning in for this latest episode of Maria Malima, What You Know About Islam. And inshallah, I'll be seeing you all very, very soon. I greet you again with the greeting words of peace of assalamu alaikum. Peace.